President Bola Tinubu approved nomination of two new ministers. Governor Yaya Belu urges parents to take health seriously and children to take advantage of every opportunity. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis dropped out of 2024 presidential race, endorsed Donald Trump. In sports, Liverpool extends lead at the top of the Premier League to five points. And on entertainment, Excitement as Nollywood actor Mr. Ibu returns home after months in hospital. This is MLC TV Global News reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the Confluence state of Nigeria. I am Abiodun Sadiq. President Bola Tinubu has approved the nomination of Jamila Ibrahim to serve as the Minister of Youth pending our confirmation by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The President has further approved the nomination of the Ayodele Olawande to serve as the Minister of State for Youth pending its confirmation by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Ibrahim is a young medical doctor who recently served as the President of the Progressive Young Women Forum. She has also served as the Senior Special Assistant to the Quara State Governor on Sustainable Development Goals. Kogi State Governor has encouraged parents, leaders, to always take their health seriously. He made a call during the median edition of the Kogi State University matriculation in Kaba. We have performed in all of the five to nine thematic areas, including education and health. Please, we have the best health facility in Nigeria today here in Kogi State, the reference hospital. Okay, let us take our health very seriously. We should go for periodic checks. We have the best of all of the machines you can think of in this world. Wherever you are going to travel to, whether in the U.S., U.K., Germany, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, we have those equipments and personnel here in Kogi State. So please, I urge each and every one of us to go for periodic check. Governor Bailo paid a tribute to the late Adis Sanyo Ismail, the immediate past commissioner on special duties. He granted scholarship to all his children to first degree level and an immediate job for his wife after she completed a mourning period. I received the sad news of the passing away of one of the servants and great sons of the land passed away. And the person of Honorable Ismail Yahaya Adesayo. A land he just loved. No accident. Nothing happened to him. And he passed on. He served as a commissioner in my cabinet. May his soul continue to rest in peace. He was among those who made every contribution towards the establishment of this university. And I know that he wouldn't want us to postpone this historic event. And as such, we have to continue. It's been buried according to Islamic rights. To this end, I know that his family his immediate family, friends, and well-wishers, and all of us, we are going to miss him. Definitely, the family will miss him physically and several other ways. However, he belongs to GYB family, and he belongs to us. We will try as much as possible to fill the void his absence would create. Therefore, 
We are offering the wife. I'm aware he has, she has Bachelor of Science in, in Education. We are offering the wife an immediate employment after observing her morning period. We are offering her an immediate employment and she, we are going to give her options to choose out of. Also, to all his children, we are going to ensure that they enjoy scholarship to first degree level. As much as possible, we care for our own. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Governor Bello charged the students to leverage every opportunity at their disposal to improve themselves. The three state universities to engage in compilaboration. When you compete healthily and you collaborate in a very competitive manner, then we are going to have the best of students and educational system here in Kogi State. And let every other state come and learn from us. I would want to urge all of our parents, including students, that we should latch on to the federal government program of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the student loan scheme. Nobody should have any reason not to go to the university or higher institution and learn. Mr. President has given us that opportunity. We should latch on it. And I am very confident that Koki State will rank the best as we have always been in all fields of endeavor. He said he's quitting as the governor but leaving the state and the people with a capable leader in the person of Usman Ododo who would not disappoint them. As I'm quitting this stage, I know that the shoe I'm leaving behind will perfectly be fitted by Ahmed Usman Odudu, the governor elect. So fear not that I am somewhere. I will provide all the necessary support and advice till he succeeds even better than I am. Of course, we have President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who knows the road, and we've been following him. We will continue to follow him till we get to the promised land. He thanked the traditional rulers for all their support. A former governor of Kogi State, Captain Idris Wada, on Saturday paid a courtesy visit to Governor Yahya Bello, saying he could not but show his appreciation to the governor for his notable achievements in the state, especially in the areas of security, healthcare, education, and infrastructure. He said his visit was specifically aimed at commending Governor Bailu for his sterling stewardship since he assumed office in 2016 and to convey his best wishes for his future endeavors. This is contained in a press statement made available to journalists by the Governor's Chief Press Secretary, Unogo Mohamed in Abuja. The ex-Governor also pledged his full support for the incoming administration in the state. The incumbent and his predecessor also discussed state affairs, the challenges of governance at various levels, particularly within Kogi State, and broader security issues. Governor Bello, while welcoming Wada to his Zone 4 residence in Abuja, described him as an exemplary leader and a statesman of progressive qualities. He acknowledged the challenges the former governor faced during his tenure and commended the diligence effort made within the constraint of available resources, particularly given the unique political challenges of Kogi State. Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello will on Wednesday present first-class staff of office to the Oimege Igu of Koton Kerfi Kingdom, Dr. Sheidu Akau Saliu. In a statement made available to pressmen, 
He said the presentation ceremony which is expected to take place at the Oimege Palace, Koton Kafi, on Wednesday 24th, January, would be chaired by the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Malagi. Akau was recently appointed by the state government after the disposition of Gambo Isa Koto as the Oimege Igu of Koton Kafi Kingdom. On politics, the All Progressive Congress has won the chairmanship and 312 councillorship position in all the 27 local government areas in Borno State. This is as APC candidate in Jari local government of the state, Ina Galadima, has been declared chairman elect, making her the first female to be elected local government council chairman in the state. Ina Galadima, a one-time commissioner and special advisor, was declared the winner of the election by the returning officer of Jari local government area, Professor Muhammad Kota. Koton said, Galadima scored 110,459 votes to defeat our closest rival and candidate of the People's Democratic Party, who scored 2,478 votes. We'll go on a short break. We'll be right back. Malachi TV Online is here for your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news. Choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back. And on crime, following the relentless advancement of the Federal Capital Territory Police Command Anti-Kidnapping Squad in a concerted effort with troops of the Nigerian Army on the heels of the kidnappers that struck the Zuma 1 area in the Buari Area Council on the 2nd of January 2024. The FCT police has rescued the victims and reunited them with their families. In a statement made available to journalists by SP Josephine Ade, the police public relations officer for the commissioner of police, FCT Police Command, said the operatives successfully rescued the victims around Kajuru Forest in Cardinal State. While appreciating the Inspector General of Police, IGP Olukayode Egbetokun, for the deployment of the newly commissioned Special Intervention Squad, which has given an uplift to the existing security architecture of the FCT and has brewed public confidence. The good people of the FCT are hence encouraged to note the following emergency lines displayed and promptly report suspicious activities. An foreign scene. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has dropped out of the 2024 presidential race and endorsed Donald Trump. The surprise video announcement comes ahead of this week's New Hampshire Republican primary, where DeSantis was pulling in the single digits. The conservative lawmaker said that he did not have a clear path to victory when announcing the end of his campaign. His departure leaves Nikki Haley as Trump's only significant rival. Despite the grim news for his supporter, DeSantis said his campaign left it all out on the field in the nearly five minutes long video on X, formerly Twitter. The Florida governor added that he was endorsing Trump because it had become clear that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. 
The Duchess of York has been diagnosed with malignant melanoma following the removal of a cancerous mole during treatment for breast cancer. Sarah Ferguson has several moles removed and analyzed while having reconstructive surgery following a mastectomy, a spokesman said. The Duchess remained in a good spirit despite it being distressing to have another cancer diagnosis. She is the third royal to announce a medical procedure this week. A spokesperson said a dermatologist asked that several moles were removed and analyzed at the same time as the Duchess was undergoing reconstructive surgery. Following a mastectomy, and one of these has been identified as cancerous, she is undergoing further investigation to ensure that this has been caught in the early stage. On sport, in a continuation of the African Cup of Nations games played on Sunday in Ivory Coast, in Group E and F, Morocco were forced to 1-1 one, one draw by DR Congo, thereby denying them automatic qualification in the round of 16. In the second match of the day, Zambia and Tanzania also played a 1-1 one, one draw. The last match for the day, South African edge past Namibia four goals to nothing. Meanwhile, the final group games begin Monday with Group A clashes. Equatorial Guinea versus Ivory Coast, Guinea-Bissau versus Nigeria. Liverpool extended their lead at the top of the Premier League to five points as an impressive second half display overpowered Bathmont at the Vitality Stadium. It is another show of Liverpool's attacking strength as two goals apiece from Darwin Nunes and Diago Jota sealed a deserved three points. In another match on Sunday, Sheffield United and West Ham played a 2-2 draw in an entertaining duel with two late goals and two red either side in the second half. Other EPL games played over the weekend saw Arsenal whitewash Crystal Palace in a London derby by five goals to nothing, while Brentford and Nottingham Forest ended 3-2 on Saturday. Joy Dada has more on entertainment. Welcome to our entertainment segment. I am Joy Dada. Nollywood actor Ken Eriks has brought joy to fans by sharing a heartwarming video of his visit to veteran actor John Okafor, popularly known as Mr. Ibu. After several months of hospitalization, Ibu is officially back home, still in the process of recovery. Ken Eriks took to his Instagram page to share a video of his visit, expressing respect and brightening the day for fans and admirers of the veteran actor. In his caption, Ken Eriks mentioned that the video was meant to bring joy to the day of fans and lovers of Mr. Ibu. Fans flooded the comment section with heartfelt messages, praising Ken Eriks for his thoughtful visit and expressing gratitude for Ibu's return. Controversial Nigerian singer Habib Okikiola, popularly known as Potebu, was attacked at his home on Monday morning. Learned that the Zazuze Krona was attacked for allegedly failing to perform at a show he was paid for. Taking to his Instagram page, Potebu shared videos of some men at his apartment as they engaged in a heated argument. In another post via his Instagram story, the singer stated he had gone to the hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, Potebu recently confronted a singer who went spiritual against him, 
after he refused to sign him on his record label. Reports that Potable made this known in the video he shared on his Instagram story. The Zazuze Kruna show up some of the ritual items the singer has been dropping close to his studio. He further revealed that after he refused to sign the singer, he rented an apartment close to him and started staging an attack against him. Crossing over to Europe, beloved British composer Larry Johnson, who provided some of the most memorable themed songs for films and television, has died aged 96. Johnson was best known for creating unforgettable tunes for classic British television, including the six-season series The Avengers, which ran from 1961 to 1969, The Professionals, and Anima Magics. His family confirmed in a statement that he died in his sleep. Johnson is survived by his wife, daughter, son-in-law, and grandson. Thanks for joining me. Joy Dada reporting for MS. And that is the size of our package. Do support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malakai TV. Like and follow our Facebook pages, MLC TV, MLC TV 2, MLC TV Yoruba, and Ibira Vaber, MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021, X and Malakai TV, and TikTok, Malakai underscore TV. For your event coverage and appearance on any of our programs, contribution, comment, advert placement, or sponsorship, please call or send SMS to any of our numbers display on your screen. Join Malakite TV online on weekends to watch our various programs. Saturday 7 p.m. Political Arena, Sunday 6 p.m. Women's World, and Monday 9 a.m. The Opinion. It is Malakite TV reaching everywhere informing everyone. Please be your brother's keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Abiodun Sadiq. See you tomorrow.